This video is kindly sponsored by Wren. Hey, 42 here. The 2nd of September 1859 was one of the strangest days in all of human history. It started like a scene from a sci-fi horror film when compasses all over the world began to go haywire, spinning and whirling as though North was suddenly everywhere all at once. At about the same time, bright lights appeared in the night sky, so bright that people in Europe and North America got out of bed and started getting ready for work, despite the fact sunrise was still hours away. Just in case everyone wasn't already freaked out enough, before long the Global Electrical Telegraph Network, the cutting edge communications tech of the day, failed suddenly and completely. And when I say failed, I don't mean it shut down. No, it went absolutely mental. Telegraph wires started throwing off sparks, setting pylons on fire, and generally scaring the crap out of everyone nearby. And telegraph operators received powerful electric shocks whenever they tried to go near their equipment. Panicked technicians disconnected the batteries powering telegraph stations in an attempt to put a stop to whatever the hell was going on, but it didn't work. Despite having no visible supply of electricity, the telegraph network kept on functioning just fine for hours on end. Have you ever felt that little bit of climate change guilt for perhaps not doing enough? Well, REN is an awesome website where you can not only calculate your carbon footprint, but actually offset it. By answering a few quick questions about your lifestyle, like I did, you can find out your carbon footprint and how you can reduce it. Now, obviously no one can reduce their carbon footprint to absolute zero. Therefore, with REN, you can effortlessly offset your remaining carbon footprint by contributing a small amount based on your answers to help fund one of their fantastic projects. You'll receive monthly updates from the tree planting, rainforest protection, and other green projects you're helping to support through REN. You actually get to see the trees you planted and what your money is spent on. And the best place to start is by heading over to REN.co and learning more about your carbon footprint. Also, I've partnered with REN to plant 10 extra trees for the first 100 people who sign up using my referral link in the description below. Perhaps unsurprisingly, considering the somewhat biblical vibe of these events, a fair few people thought the end times were upon them. What else could turn the night sky to day and magically power electrical devices outside of a hungover deity who'd had one too many ambrosias the night before? But when neither Jesus Christ nor his evil twin, the Antichrist, showed up to explain what the hell was going on, people were forced to come up with other, more scientific theories. Could these strange events be the result of some kind of extreme weather? Perhaps meteorites were to blame? Volcanic activity, maybe? Gremlins? Leprechauns? Godzilla? Ultimately, nobody had a clue. Or at least, almost nobody. Because there was one man who thought he had a pretty good idea what had triggered all this madness. His name was Richard Carrington, an amateur astronomer who, around 18 hours earlier, had witnessed something very strange indeed. You see, Carrington was interested in sunspots, and while studying a particularly large cluster of them from his own personal observatory in Surrey, he'd seen two balls of intensely bright white light erupt from the sun's surface. At the time, Carrington had no idea what had caused the flashes, but when the entire world went stark raving mad in the early hours of the following morning, he was convinced it was no coincidence. As it happened, he was right. Because Richard Carrington had just become the first man in history to witness a solar flare, an intense burst of radiation emitted by the sun. And this wasn't just any solar flare. Carrington had stumbled across a whopper. Today, 
162 years later, it remains the single most powerful solar flare ever observed by man. These days, we know solar flares are pretty common. In times of high sun activity, we might expect to see several every day. So why did the one Carrington saw cause so much chaos? Well, the flare itself wasn't responsible for convincing people the world was ending. That was down to the accompanying coronal mass ejection, a colossal cloud containing billions of tons of highly energetic, highly magnetized plasma fired out from the sun at speeds of up to 1,800 miles per second. That's about 1% of the speed of light, or 4,000 times faster than a speeding bullet. Yeah. If you value the integrity of your cells, you really don't want to get in the way of one of these things. Luckily, coronal mass ejections can be fired off from the sun in any direction, meaning most of the time these giant clouds of plasmary death simply pass by us. Even when they do hit the earth, many are harmlessly deflected. But under the right conditions, a coronal mass ejection can crash into Earth's magnetosphere with frightening force, creating what's known as a geomagnetic storm. And it was one such storm that caused all the strange goings on experienced by Richard Carrington and co. back in 1859. Solar storm induced disturbances in the Earth's magnetic field were behind the odd behaviour of compass needles and those bright lights in the night sky were auroras, which are caused when charged particles fired out from the sun excite atoms in the atmosphere. As you're probably aware, auroras are pretty common near the Earth's poles, but during the geomagnetic storm of 1859, known today as the Carrington Event, incredibly bright and widespread auroras were seen almost at the equator. But as interesting as spinning compass needles and dazzling auroras are, what's especially interesting about the Carrington event today is the effect it had on the telegraph network. As magnetized plasma from a coronal mass ejection smashes into the magnetosphere, the Earth's magnetic field quivers and compresses, sending huge amounts of electrical and magnetic energy through the atmosphere. Down at the surface, all that energy can induce huge electrical currents, seemingly out of thin air. It was this phenomenon, known as a geomagnetically induced current, that allowed the telegraph network to function even after technicians had disconnected it from its power source during the Carrington event. That's kind of amazing when you think about it. For a while, the global telegraph network was essentially being powered by electrified air, thanks to an event that happened on the sun 93 million miles away. But as well as being really amazing, it's also really, really bad. As you've probably noticed, the world's changed a little bit since 1859. Back then, the electrical telegraph network was the only large-scale electrical infrastructure on Earth. It was also basically brand new, having only been rolled out in the previous decade. When it went haywire, it was fairly inconvenient, but not exactly a global crisis. Fast forward to today, and pretty much our entire way of life relies on electricity. Which means that if a solar storm of the magnitude of the Carrington event were to happen today, we'd be f***ed. Admittedly, it's hard to say just how badly. We simply don't have the data to accurately quantify the impact of an apocalypse-scale solar superstorm. But it's no exaggeration to say that in the absolute worst case scenario, a sufficiently large geomagnetic storm could quite literally spell the end of the modern world as we know it. Satellite communications and global GPS would be disrupted, whilst additional drag caused by heating of the Earth's upper atmosphere could see some satellites come crashing down to Earth after being knocked out of orbit entirely. Any astronauts unlucky enough to be outside of the Earth's magnetosphere and beyond the confines of their spaceship on a spacewalk, for example, would be blasted with enough radiation to cause serious sickness 
and probably instant death. Down here on terra firma, things wouldn't be much better either. Colossal geomagnetically induced currents would begin coursing through all those lovely wires we humans like to leave lying around everywhere, eventually making their way into key infrastructure within the electrical grid and wreaking absolute havoc. An earthbound coronal mass ejection in the spring of 1989 triggered a geomagnetic storm severe enough to cause widespread power failures in Quebec. Technicians responded to the storm fairly quickly, but 6 million people were still left without electricity for 9 hours, and some towns didn't even get their power back for days. That might not sound too bad, a 9 hour blackout in one region of a single country isn't exactly what you'd call apocalyptic. But the 1989 geomagnetic storm was an absolute tiddler compared to the Carrington event. If a solar storm of that magnitude were to strike today, damage to the electrical grid might be so severe that tens of millions of people would be left without power for weeks, months, or possibly even years. Another key facet of modern life that could be in trouble during a large solar storm is the 21st century's most widespread religion, the internet. That's because it relies on certain key data routes, collectively known as the backbone of the internet, that are particularly vulnerable to geomagnetically induced currents. As you've probably noticed, as well as providing a fertile breeding ground for hilarious cat videos, the internet basically runs the entire world these days. It's central to the safe flow of power and water into our homes, businesses and hospitals, it keeps oil running through continent-spanning pipelines, it underpins the banking sector, makes card payments possible, and ensures that global supply chains put enough food in our supermarkets. In short, widespread and prolonged disruption to the internet would be an utter catastrophe. When the COVID-19 pandemic began making planet Earth a significantly worse place to live early last year, entire industries ground to a halt, key supply chains threatened to crumble, and perfectly normal people turned into rabid toilet paper hoarding maniacs. To get an idea of what a worst case scenario Carrington event sized geomagnetic storm might look like, try imagining something a bit like that only the power's gone, there's no water coming out of the taps, satellites are falling out of the sky, the supermarket shelves are completely empty, there's no fuel in the petrol stations, and most devastatingly of all, you can't update your Facebook status. Oh, and just to make things even more exciting, solar storms can also effectively jam military early warning systems potentially giving any ambitious and opportunistic world leader the perfect opportunity to kick off World War III with a handy head start. In 1979, a particularly spicy solar storm almost led to nuclear war, when all three of the US Air Force's ballistic missile detection systems suddenly jammed. This being the Cold War, the US naturally assumed the Soviets were behind the attack. And since the obvious motivation for jamming a missile detection system is to fire a missile, the US military scrambled nuclear warhead equipped fighter jets in preparation for all out war. It was only when some helpful scientists connected the situation to the ongoing solar storm that disaster was averted. Okay, so this all sounds terrible, but there is at least some good news. As I've said, this is all very much a worst case scenario. Some scientists are convinced even a Carrington event scale solar storm would only inflict temporary damage on Earth's key electrical infrastructure. Even more encouragingly, major governments around the world are already taking this threat very seriously, and steps are being taken to ensure we're well prepared for whatever the sun can throw at us. The less good news, sometimes known by its nickname, bad news, 
is that we might not have much longer to get ready ourselves because an apocalyptic solar storm might just be around the corner. Estimates as to the likelihood of a Carrington-class solar storm occurring in any given decade vary, but at the high end, it could be as much as 12%. If that figure's accurate, most of you watching this video will have a 50-50 chance of finding out how this story ends within your lifetime. So be sure to let me know how it goes, and thanks for watching. Good news, you can now pre-order my new book, Bread and Circuses, What Did the Romans Ever Do For Us? It's a wild and witty journey for a thousand years of unexpected Roman history, told in a refreshing way and packed full of incredible and unbelievable stories. Copies are selling out fast, so pre-order yours today to lock it in. Thank you.